Hi, welcome back to Kolsky RC. Today we're going to have a look at these Eosheen goggles. So those of you who have watched my channel for a bit know that I normally fly with the DJI FPV system. I have 13 quads, I think, that are built on the DJI system, but I also have quite a few analogs. And I've also bought a couple of analogs recently because um, I don't want to get fully dedicated to DJI and plus it cost-wise, you couldn't keep doing it. So... I was finding the whole thing was bulky and I didn't really like it and I don't particularly think I had that great a picture coming back on it on the big screen. I think you can, with the screen being so big I could really tell on a poor camera how poor it looked. Whereas on normal goggles you can sort of get away with that because the screens are smaller. So, I wanted some goggles so I looked around and I was going to buy the new um, um, Eosheen EV400s and I also had a look at the... Um, Skyzone version, the O4X is it, and both of them have OLED screens and the Skyzone just has a bigger thing, but we're still looking at 380 quid, and then I'd have to buy them from Banggood, and then I'd have to get them from the thing, and you've always got that thing when you spend somewhere like 380 quid in a pair of goggles, is it going to work when it gets here, or am I not going to have any warranty, because you tend not to have on these products from Banggood and places like that. So, I had a look on eBay, and I was looking through, and I found these, these are the Eosheen 300Ds, so these came out about 11 months ago and they had a problem with the fact that it had latency of anything up to 120 milliseconds. So that issue has now been fixed with a firmware upgrade. I think the latency is now 32 milliseconds, something like that. Certainly 34. I can't tell. I, I honestly can't tell a thing. To me, they look absolutely fine. And I think to the vast majority of people that fly, you're not going to notice that. And I picked these up for £180 brand spanking new, currently on Banggood, the £201 as we sit today. And it's not a flash deal, so if you've got points, you could actually get that for less. And I've also seen a set since I bought these on eBay, I think it was last week, and they were open box and they were £170. So you can get these things cheap. And these have quad diversity, if quadversity if you like. So obviously... They don't come with any antennas, so you get no antennas. Your two receiver modules are built in when you get it, and you have to put your own antennas on. I've got many RC on this side, and I also had these, um, the Furious FPB poker chip. I think they're really good. These, these come in about 19 quid, and I think these are 22. So, But these are really, really decent, so as you can see, it's got the poker chip design on. Uh, and they're both right hand, everything on here is right hand. So let's have a look at the, the other thing I think you definitely need to do if you want to buy some of these is replace the strap because the strap that comes with it is appallingly bad and doesn't hold it properly on your head. And I don't know why that is, I think they've got the strap wrong. This is wider, this is the Ethix Jumbo strap. These are fantastic. They're about 13 quid but they're absolutely brilliant. Um, the battery on the Ishi normally would go into the back which I don't like because I think it pulls it back down on your head and this has got a size. The other thing I like about this is in review of the strap but inside of here it's got some grippy rubber bits that hold your battery nice it doesn't try and fall out so enough of the strap and i think with this you get an absolutely banging picture it really is good so these are not oled these are low cost i believe they'll cost screens and the 1280 by 960 these things have auto search built into them so you've got hdmi in on the bottom, you've got, you can adjust your focal length and your IPD, which is the best, which is the main reason I needed to buy these or the equivalent sky zones that I was telling you about or the ear sheens because I have a problem and I need reading glasses. Absolutely fine on the DJI and that's because it's big screens. But these, not only do they adjust your IPD by going left and right, you can adjust your focal lens in and out. Let me see if I can show you that. That's my printer that's just started. Um, sorry about that. So if I adjust, if you watch this lens here, you might be able to see it go in and out. But if you can, because I've never looked at it, you can actually, can you? Yeah, you just can see it, I think, going in and out. And that's beginning further and nearer to my eyes. So obviously, if you've got problem where you need reading glasses, these go up to a positive three. So if you buy, um, you'll know that if you need to buy diopters, you can only get minus diopters, so you can get minus diopters, minus two, minus four, minus six in a set. But if you want 
positive diopters you have to have them specially made and they can work out about 70 quid it's a lot of money for a set of diopters so hence the reason I, need, I wanted something with this type of adjustment on the bottom also under you've got your headphone socket a usb and that is to do updates which i'll tell you about in a second and then you've got audio visual in on the standard cable your fan is controlled here on the top so you have an on and off switch and a fan so it does both long press to turn it on or off short press turns the fan on or off you've then got your mode switch here which controls everything really we'll talk about in a minute and then you've got up and down channels and then you've got your dvr button which is a press in there to turn your dvr on the sd card slot is in the front of the goggles got there which i hate well seems to be the place that they want to put them these days and as you can see they're just a fabulous construction these pieces here come out so that's where you could fit your diopters in if you need diopters if, as well but they do come in and out so all in all it's quite an impressive package and it would have been very impressive i think there's a 340 when they came out something like that and it would have been absolutely sensational if it hadn't have been for the latency the latency's kind of killed these goggles and because what happens is reviewers review these things and and that's fine but they rarely go back and do the, a latency update. Now some have, I think, uh, Pen 360 did, and I think Joshua Bardwell did, but he used the early firmware that came out for this, which still wasn't great. And you've got to go back and do these things, which is why it's sometimes, like I've said before in other videos, I'm going to stop doing reviews of items that have just come out, or I'll do partial reviews or first looks, and then I'll do a review after I've had it a month, two months, and you will let you know how good these things really are. So it records in H264, 30 frames per second. And it has a 42 degree field of view, which is lovely, which is really immersive. Uh, some of the other ones tend to be late 30s, or, or you can get stuff that's a little bit higher, but that's what you tend to... Pick up, um, sorry about that. It, these have Japan Citizen panels in there, which is supposed to be a low latency display, but we all know what happened with that. So it really is, you've got everything going for them, apart from the fact with this latency issue they had. So let's boot them up. It comes with the battery case. The battery case is the typical ESG one, if you've ever seen one of these. I like them because they've got the button on the top, so you can test how much voltage you've got in. So that's not an on-off switch. On and off switch is on your goggles. You're not going to see much, but we can maybe boot it into the first screen. You can possibly see there. No, it's impossible. I, I hate doing trying to do your goggles. It's virtually impossible. But you can get a general kind of idea. The the one thought, well, the negatives on this, the phone's absolutely awful, and I can't find a replacement foam. If you do know about a replacement foam that you can get for this that fits it, that's not the standard foam because I don't like it, please let me know in the comments, uh, and I'll get I can get one. I've tried other foams on here that which don't quite fit. Oh, me hitting the DVR button that don't quite fit. So 20 menu, you've got a cross and left holding will enter your menu and will allow you to just picture res um, your resolution, your colour grading and whether you've got 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. These are 16 by 9 4 by 3 goggles, which I do switch depending on what camera I've got because I can fly happily with either. I think I do prefer 16 9 to be honest. If you press it the other way, it allows you into the other functions. So if you long press across, it will allow me into the other functions. Well, I don't think it's going to do anything at the minute, because I think. And that allows me to adjust my in and out. So I can select HDMI by pressing that, or go down and swap it to AV. So it's for my input only. If you press the button and hold it to, and let it go when it beeps once, it will enter auto search, and it will find your four strongest channels. And then to cycle through those four strongest channels, uh, single press the mode button until you get the one that you think's best. And then you auto search your setup. Obviously, you can manually search up and down through the buttons here as you can on every set of goggles. Like I said, the battery comes with this strap. It's quite a long strap because it's designed to go on the back of your head. And 
like I say, I just didn't like it. Construction wise, they're really nicely made. These come in white or black. I think they're well finished off. One of the things you do notice if you tend to buy a set of these and you get them and these rattle inside here, your receivers rattle. They do on mine as well. I just put a bit of double sided tape behind each one. It seems to be that they've got the um, distance between this cover and the receiver too too much and so it's allowing a little bit of flex because that's supposed to hold it in so a little a little bit of um sticky tape on the back of there is absolutely fine so this is your fan button Let's see if you can hear the difference when i turn it on it's quite noisy anyway because of the yeah, i can hear that here but i don't think the camera's going to pick it up so all in all these are brilliant. So the reason I'm reviewing them as well as buying them is obviously they've been out quite a bit. It's because <clears throat> there's loads of packages going around with these cheap budget goggles. And then you've got budget goggles which go up to about £80, £90. Pounds, and then we seem to be jumping massively into the high-end stuff. And these are fantastically placed in my opinion at 200 quid. If you were, if If you're a flyer like me who doesn't fly everything analog or indeed you've only got a couple of quads you don't want to get silly into the hobby i think these are ideal i think they really are the picture's nice and sharp you can adjust so much range of contrast and brightness that you can get the picture exactly like you want it i really do like it obviously it depends on what camera you're using on your quad but even on the olive ones which are the cameras that do both so you've got the single lens but it's also doing a run cam uh, splits an example because the camera is doing both it's obviously been used as a recording camera and it's being used as an fpv camera these tend to be not great picture with this fantastic uh, best i've had certainly better than i did on the dji's when i had the dji's hooked up to it as for range they seem fine i've not i've not flown crazy i seem to fly longer distance with the dji than i would with analog and there's no particular reason for doing that other than it just it's the control range probably that i go for there but i'm going to test these out and do a long range flight because i've got a quad coming up in my next video that you're going to see and i've actually bought that to mainly do longer ranging and that is analog so all in all i really like these goggles i think they're fantastic value for money don't be put off by these stories of how bad the latency is because with the update it fixes that. Oh, I meant to tell you about the update. Sorry, that was the last thing I meant to mention. So the update is a bit strange. Bear with me. So with the update, what you have to do is get the update, which is just type in Eosheen um, EV300D firmware and it'll, there's loads of sites pulling it, same thing. And it's a very, very small bin file and I just put it onto a little micro uh, into a little sd card and sd drive but you need to buy one of these this is an otg cable for some reason they haven't made it compatible with doing updates from the sd card which would be sensible but they haven't done that so you need to buy one of these these are around four quid i got two of these exact same ones from amazon for six quid you simply pop it onto there you pop the whole thing into the bottom of the goggles. And then in your menu, if you go all the way to the right, go into your setup menu. And then you've got three different screens in there. Go all the way to the left hand one. And on there you will find firmware update. Simply press the button. It'll ask if you're certain. Yes or no. Hit yes. It'll literally take three or four seconds. The goggles will then turn themselves off and it's done. Simple as that. One of the other things I don't like about it is there's no version number so you can't tell what version of software you're on. So once you've done it you've no way of confirming it apart from the fact that the goggles work. But there's no way to know if a further firmware update comes out whether it's going to be newer than the one you've got. But we can't it takes 3 or 4 seconds to do. It really doesn't matter that much do I. So thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.